and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Who's Who in the Zoo, released in 1942. It's the 356th in the series and it's directed by Warren McKay. You can find this on the Porky Pig 101 DVD set. It's also in the public domain, so after the review, I'll have the whole short playing for you. But for consistency's sake, in case you haven't seen this short, well, it's just a spot gag cartoon at the zoo. So, and Porky is in it, kind of, sort of, so... Yeah, it's one of those shorts. So first up, you're going to see the commentary highlights. The full commentary is still on the channel, but again, for consistency's sake, I wanted to add the highlights to this review. And then you're going to hear some new thoughts from me, so... Without further ado, let's get into it. Today are my fellow zoo animals, Lou Genocide and Austin Kelly. Say hi, guys. <laughs> hi. Of course, missing links. I mean, of course, it's, you know, ha ha, very f <laughs> ridiculous. So um, this is Norm's second cartoon. And, uh, and it appears with this one, he actually got some help from Chuck Jones. Um, you know, that was, that was something that uh, S.E. McPeter get, um to my attention so i thought i'd uh, look into this further and austin's got some more info about it so did you want to tell us about um chuck's involvement in this one yeah well basically norm uh said that chuck jones helped him out a lot on this cartoon and you know chuck worked late to help him you know with the character layouts and everything i mean chuck was really a good guy i think and i mean it's just it's fascinating because obviously Chuck had his own work to do and he could have easily turned that down if he wanted to, but I mean, he still helped him out. So it really says something about who he was. Mm. And you can definitely tell that um, some of the Chuck, Chuck's influences here, like what, what, once, once um, that was pointed out, you can clearly see some of it. More or less a spot get cartoon done by Norman. Oh, of course, marching hair. Yes, 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 we know. <laughs> Hey, Anthony. Yeah. Um, I do like this bald eagle gag before you're saying what you're going to say, Blue. I like this. Yeah. And I'll point out here, this is a weird layout thing. Like, like he's, he's clearly in the back, but somehow his head is, go, pops out for a second through the bars. You'll see it again when, when the gag... Am I, am I supposed to... Actually, no, it, it doesn't look like it's intentional. It looks like just a natural... Um, the natural head turn. It doesn't look like he's jerking towards the camera. That is weird. Yeah. I really like that bear design for some reason. Yeah, it's nice. But this guy is just weird. Just, you know, he's going to attack this, you know, uh, sheep. And it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's like mind your own business kind of thing. Like, okay, sure. But it's like, really? I like how a lot of these guys are just so stupid. <laughs> I just love this kind of stuff in one cartoon. Exactly, because, you know, in the, in the zoo, I mean, when they feed the animals, you know, they give them, you know, already killed animals, you know, they're not going to just put a live animal. <laughs> Such a charming design. Oh, of course, the hyena. Yes, yes, yes. I don't get it. That's Anthony during the last time he saw a Shrek movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But there was like there was like a Chuck, Chuck Jones face in the middle of that laughter as well if you if you if you take a look but well and that's and that's blue when uh he sees ice cream of course just <laughs> no it's my friend aaron <laughs> see he's a lion but this is pretty this is a, definitely a dark joke it's you can you kind of know what's coming you know that this is going to happen but the way it's done you just <laughs> just look at the ball. look how happy it is <laughs> such great animation on that one just such a happy lion, but of course we don't see the gruesome details, and uh, yeah, we all know that uh, it wasn't really about the ice cream, was it? Ah, uh, such a content lion. So happy. So, those were the highlights, and again, as I mentioned, the full commentary is still available on the channel. So, re-watching this one, it's quite clear that just about every director had at least one attempt at a Spotcat cartoon. Of course, Tex Avery originated it, but then you had Clamper doing some, and pretty much this team worked with Bob Clampett anyway, and they did a few Spotcat cartoons, so I'm guessing this might have been maybe a leftover idea before Clampett actually took over Tex Avery's unit. I don't know, but whatever. Norm McCabe does his Spotcat short, 
Chris Freely and Chuck Jones, they even did their spot gag shorts as well around this time. It just, maybe it was just really popular in the theatres at the time. I don't know, but surely there must have been a call for more of them to be made anyway. But this short, yeah, it's very similar to Tex Avery's A Day at the Zoo, and it's interesting to compare the two now. A Day at the Zoo is superior. I think Tex Avery was the best of Spock Gag shorts. That was his thing, and he, everyone else is just trying to ape that particular style of short with very degrees of success. But anyway, that doesn't mean this short is bad. It just depends on your tolerance for bad jokes, I guess. But anyway, so... Just taking a look at the short on a few things I missed. So I was wondering about the Azusa name and I had a look and sure enough, look, a lot of you might already know this because you might be from California, but for the rest of us who aren't as familiar, Azusa is a real place in California and they don't have a zoo, but there is a wilderness park, but it's quite clear that they chose the name because of the whole thing with the narrator in the beginning getting all tongue tied anyway. So, as mentioned, yeah, this is pretty much a dad joke cartoon where you have the links and, yeah, the missing links, of course, haha, <laughs> right? And it's clearly a reference to the so-called missing link of human evolution. Yeah, it's just a really weird play on words there. We've got the tortoise and the hare. Again, that's a pun on the fable, the tortoise and the hare, which itself was used in three shorts starring Bugs Bunny, so, yeah. It's just weird that the tortoise just gives us that look at the end of that part as we pan past. It's really, really bizarre. The Brahma steer, it turns out it is actually a real breed of cow. And I mean, I'm not an expert, so that's why I looked it up, right? So no, that is actually real. And I love that whole pun with the bum steer. I'm glad they kept it as a cow. And that's actually a really appealing design of a cow who happens to be down on his luck. So yeah, that's really, really weird. Then we see the Hollywood wolf. So we've got the whole rule of three. We've got two wolves that are actual wolf breeds. And then we see another Tex Avery style pun with the Hollywood wolf. So the wolf in this context, because it is one of those things that perhaps isn't really said today, calling someone a wolf, but it's just basically just someone that pursues women for companionship, so to speak. And it is, it's actually pretty dark because he goes, hey, you ought to be in pictures after whistling after, I'm, I'm assuming, a lady walking past. Yeah, it's a dark callback to the whole casting couch situation for wannabe women actors, which, yeah, that's uh, pretty dark now, but yeah, that's what it's clearly referencing here. So, a minute and a half into this, we see Porky. Hey, yeah, it's your short, but Pig, you're barely in it, but whatever, I guess he, gets, hey, Porky, he has to get shoehorned in somehow, mouth. right? Well, and then he goes to feed a giraffe. It's not like you could put just, I don't know, put food higher up for the draft to eat, like a normal zookeeper. No, just, just an idea. It's such, a, such a bizarre gag that he's putting all that effort into something which is clearly just a waste of time and energy. But anyway, yep, the rabbit parts, oh, I'm definitely eye-rolled here. But anyway, we got the cottontail rabbit and the march hairs marching. Beautiful. Gotta love that. Now, you can see the bald eagle gag coming a mile away, but it's still pretty funny, especially the reaction of the bald eagle saying, all right, all right, I'm bald, okay? But anyway, but it's one of those jokes. Uh, then we're going to see a setup for the lion gag, where it's like a rule of three, and that's also what Tex Avery did with a lot of his spot gag shorts, where you would see like a setup for something. It's also something that Clampett did in Farm Frolics, so you had the setup with those pigs in that short in here, and of course it's the actual lion. Then we see that Black Panther and the whole aluminium drive. We say aluminium, you guys say alu aluminum, okay? It's a, it's a difference of language there for us, but anyway. So there was definitely a metal scrap drive because by the time this short came out, Pearl Harbor happened and now there's the whole scrap drive for the war effort. So there you go. Yes, we get the African elephant and then... Yes, the Indian elephant, which is clearly a play on the fact that there are elephants in India, but they're playing up the fact that, yeah, Native Americans, Indians, that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Whatever. But here's something bizarre. I was looking at the fur seal's scientific name, and what they have in this cartoon is a Calorinus alascanus, if I said it correctly. That is considered to be an unaccepted scientific name. They actually use 
Calorhenus ursinus, which is for the Northern Fur Seal. So I don't know the history of the naming of these particular animals, but it's just bizarre that they chose that one, which is not the scientifically accepted name of, uh, yeah, Calorhenus ursinus. So maybe I'll just change this channel into talking about scientific names. I am doing the Roadrunners after all, and they have the scientific names, right? I mean, I mean they're accurate, aren't they? Then we see the lion is still looking for something. Yeah, okay, well, clearly we're setting up with something which is pretty good. Now, we see a Tex Avery-style fake-out. So, there'll be the whole thing where it's like, oh no, the animal's going to do something gruesome, or something really bad's going to happen. Get out, get out, that kind of thing. But then it ends up being a bit massive fake-out, but this one doesn't work at all. So, it's like, okay, he's hugging this sheep, he thinks he's going to eat the sheep, and the sheep's like, mind your own business. There's no real punchline there, I think that one just falls flat, but anyway. Then we see the Capistrano swallows, because of course they are, and of course they're going to see the swallows come back to Capistrano, which is a song you're going to hear quite a few times in a lot of the Looney Tunes shorts. It's a nice little melody. Here you actually do hear the words too. Then we see probably the dirtiest joke in this particular short about the whole thing of increasing production by 100%, and he's like, I can't do it, it's not possible, and it's like, yeah, he's really got a lot of babies there, so I'll let you figure all that one out for yourselves. <laughs> so then we see the hippo, and I don't know, Pookie's just hitting this animal so casually just to prove a point. It's like, all right, he's, why are you hitting this animal? But anyway, but then of course the hippo is ticklish, and I love the animation in that, by the way. And we see the laughing hyena who's laughing at this okay choke and then it was like I don't get it and then starts laughing again and we get the payoff with as I mentioned in the commentary track gruesome ending and the uh, and lion eating ice cream man which interesting I probably wouldn't have done that myself if I was making this short but anyway it's uh, an interesting ending I, I wonder how many ice cream men have uh, since died in trying to deliver this uh, ice cream to lion but anyway so revisiting this this is one stupid short, but in a good way. It's fun because of how stupid it really is with all the dad joke puns and that. So I guess your mileage on enjoying this short is going to depend on how much you enjoy this sort of gags. Me, yeah, I'm giving this one 7 out of 10. It's nothing special, but it makes me laugh over how stupid a lot of it actually is. But you be the judge. The short's going to play now, so the review part's over. So thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. A very interesting and instructive day may be spent at any one of the many fine zoos of our country. Here are assembled strange specimens from the jungles of deepest Africa. Rare creatures native to the highest Himalayas. Fleet-footed beasts of the plains and Pampas, as well as denizens of the mighty deep. At great expense and often at the peril of life and limb, they have been brought here so that you and I might know and understand our furred and feathered friends. The wolf family is represented by the timber wolf, his cousin the gray wolf, and the black sheep of the wolf family, the Hollywood wolf. You want to be in pictures, you Say, here's an old friend of ours, Porky Pig, the keeper of the zoo. Hey, Porky, where are you going with that mallet? Oh, I'm uh, g g g going to feed the g g g g giraffe. Look at this cute little bunny. This type of rabbit is known as the cottontail. And 
where there are rabbits, there are hares. Here we see the famous March hares. This majestic specimen of bird life is a bald eagle. <clears throat> I reiterate, a bald eagle. A bald eagle. Okay, blabbermouth. So I am bald. Before us now is the mighty monarch of the jungle, the lion. Well, his majesty acts a little restless. He seems to be looking for something. Oh, well. One of the most vicious animals is the black panther. This one is just finishing a hearty meal. <laughs> ah, the elephant. The African elephant. And from far off India, the Indian elephant. The most hated of all birds is the vulture. A sneaky bird of prey. An unspeakable ghoul, a loathsome scavenger, a snake in the grass with wings. A despicable excuse for a bird. Ah, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Yeah. The seals are getting terribly fussy lately. In fact, they're so fussy that they'll eat only fresh mountain trout. Yeah, they, they don't know from nothing. <laughs> I'll toss them a bit of a barracuda, mackerel. They'll never know the difference. Well, our friend the lion again. He still seems to be looking for something. Oh, well, we hope he sees it. The Alaskan bear is one of the strongest of all animals. He uses his tremendous strength to hug his prey to death. Once he gets those strong... Hey, hey, what's he up to? No, no, not that poor little sheep. Hey, stop it. Hey, cut that out. Put that sheep down. Hey, stop it, stop it! Stop that hugging! Oh, for goodness sake, mind your own business. When the swallows come back to get the strano. Residing temporarily at the zoo are three of the famous Capistrano swallows. Tell me, little visitors, why do you always go back to Capistrano? I don't know. I guess we're just in a rut. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's impossible. My gosh, there's a limit. Well, this daddy rabbit seems very disturbed about something. Hey, what seems to be the matter? The hippopotamus. This big brute is armored like a tank. His skin is so tough that even a bullet can hardly pierce it. That's right. In fact, over all his body, there's only one teeny weeny vulnerable spot. <laughs> oh, that's the oh, spot. Oh, you got it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> lion again. Still looking. Oh, wait. He sees something. What is it that makes him so happy? Uh-oh, the ice cream man. That old lion has a sweet tooth. That's all, folks.